Here again we gather around this baptismal font. And as we gather around this baptismal font in the midst of life, in the midst of all that changes in life, we gather around the baptismal font conscious of that which is constant, God. We gather here sure and certain that God is with us, God has always been with us, God will continue to be with us. And I greet you with these words, may indeed the Lord be with you. Would you please stand and join me in the call to worship? Here in this place, we remember all the ways God has graced us. Here in this sanctuary, we find a comfort and peace beyond what the world offers. Here in this community, we celebrate our past. Here we worship God with our lips, our hearts, and our lives. Let us pray. God, you have been our help in ages past. You watch as the generations rise and fall. You see change and transition, and you, God, remain constant. You have been our help in ages past. You are our hope for all that is yet to come. So we gather here to renew our hope in you, to offer you our, faith, our prayers and our praise, to hear your words spoken into our lives and to have our souls and our hearts and our lives refreshed and strengthened, that we may continue to walk in your ways, to follow in the ways of the Christ and to live our lives in your loving service. So God bless this time that we share together and bless us when we leave this place. When the worship is ended, let the service begin as we seek to love you and serve you in our daily living. So hear these things in the name of the Christ whom we seek to follow. And all of God's people said, Amen. Please be seated. Thank you.
Good morning, and a very warm welcome into the house of God. It is indeed a very, very warm welcome. Um, it's warm because I do welcome you here, and it's also warm because it's warm outside. And after my letter during this week, um, I, I want to tell you that I'm just very pleased that you actually came to worship this morning, so thank you. I will speak a little bit more about it later. I know that it was a shock. Um, I have to tell you, if the PC USA did it in different ways, believe you me, I would have wanted to do it very differently, but I did, both of us did what was required of us. So please um, forgive us for the hurt, but know that both Steve and I love you very, very much. I draw your attention to the announcements in the bulletin. Um, we will be celebrating our graduates next week on June the 24th. If you have a high school or college graduate, please do email the office with a, a small blurb um, and hopefully a photo as well. Don't do what Theo Level did a couple of years ago. He sent in a photograph of someone else. <laughs> <laughs> it was a bit of a shock for Jeff and Georgia when they saw the photograph of Theo and it wasn't him. Um, if Music and More continues on Thursday, uh, June 21st at noon. Please do come along um, and enjoy this selection of music. You're going to get a taster of what will be played once again uh, in worship this morning. And please do look at the rest of the announcements in the bulletin at your leisure. Thank you. Our God, who is our help in ages past and our hope for years to come, is also our faithful companion day in and day out. This is a God who looks to be with us in our deepest fears, in our highest joys, who continues to invite us into a deepening relationship of hope and love and grace, and continues to invite us into our admission of wrongdoing, things said, things left unsaid, things done and things left undone. So please say with me our prayer of confession. Holy God, we turn to you with the prayers of our lives, with hearts full of gratitude. We praise you for loving us with a relentless love and for giving us with a grace beyond our deserving. When life overwhelms, you are there to lift us up and carry us. When we feel lost and alone, you call us by name and reassure us of your presence. When we fail to trust you with the future, you remind us that we are precious in your sight and that you will never leave us. So speak into our lives today. Forgive our lack of faith and our fearful hearts, called and claimed by you. Set our feet on the path you would have us take, following in the ways of the Christ. May we walk with courage and determination into the future you have planned for us, confident in your leading. Amen. This God who has walked with us will continue to walk with us into our futures. This God continues to call us to help God realize the dreams God has for us. This God continues to call us into a deepening relationship. Friends, hear the good news of the gospel.
Please be seated. And let us pray. Holy God, we give you thanks for all the many names that could be ascribed to you. The most wonderful is the name of love. You are love. From you we come, to you we return, and throughout all our days here on earth, it is your love that upholds us and sustains us, that carries us, that guides us, that heals our hearts, that forgives our sins, that gives us strength to keep on going when our own fails us. We give you thanks, God, for your love that will never let us go, a love that will pursue us through all the days of our lives, and a love that will continue to draw us back to your heart and your loving embrace. So, God, out of love for each and every one of us, open our hearts this day, open our minds and our lives to hear your loving word as it is spoken, as it is preached, as it is heard. Lord, speak and help us to listen. Amen. Hands up if you've ever heard of William Tell. Yeah? You've heard of William Tell. What is William Tell famous for? For what is William Tell famous? More correctly, <laughs> for the English teachers among us. So I heard someone say, shooting an apple off, of a, off his kid's head. Yeah, have you heard of that story, how William Tell put an apple on his, I think his son's head, is that right? And he shot it off his son's head, brave son. What did he shoot it off with? A bow and arrow, yeah. That's a pretty neat trick, isn't it? Well, I heard uh, the other day about a man who knocked an apple off of his own head, not with his hand, but with another weapon of sorts. Now think about it. How could a man knock an apple off his head? A slingshot. <laughs> so Kathy, you can show me afterwards how that might work. <laughs> All right. Yeah, you certainly couldn't do that two ha one-handed, could you? Who said boomerang? Teddy, top of the class. That will not be new for you, Teddy. <laughs> a boomerang. This boomerang came flying all the way from Australia. And a boomerang was what the man used. Put the apple on his head, threw the boomerang, and of course, what does a boomerang do? It comes back. So um, let's see how we can do this. <laughs> Are you ready? <laughs> You should just shout, duck! <laughs> Take my word for it. This boomerang would come back eventually, hopefully. A boomerang is used by the Aborigines in Australia, and it is a wonderful thing that they throw it, and it always comes back to you. It's pretty neat. I've often wondered what would an Aboriginal do if they really wanted to get rid of it, though. You know, you're trying to get rid of this thing, and you throw it away, and it just keeps on coming back just keeps on coming back. You can't get rid of it. And I was thinking about this boomerang, and then I was thinking about, you know, when we say words. We say words. Sometimes we say words that are really hurtful and unkind and cruel. And often these words come back and hit us and hurt us. Believe me, they do. And it's the same with kind words and kind deeds. When we throw our kind words out there and our kind deeds, they come back to us too. And the cautionary note is, let's be careful what we say. Make sure our words are kind. Make sure our actions are kind. Because like this boomerang, they tend to come back around to us. But I was also thinking about this boomerang and about the Aboriginal trying to throw it and get rid of it, just discard it. And the 
Aboriginal can't get rid of it because it keeps coming back. And as I look at the world today, I sometimes think that we're trying to discard God and throw God out. We don't need God. We're fine. We see God keeps on coming back. We might turn our back on God. We might throw God out of our lives. But the thing is, God's love is so incredible that God just keeps on coming back. We're going to read from Isaiah soon, and Isaiah says this about God. God says, I know you by name. I love you. You're mine. But even if we throw God out of our lives, just like we throw away this boomerang, it keeps coming back, and so does God. We can't get rid of God because God loves us so much that God just keeps on wanting to come back into our lives and to say, you belong to me. You're mine. I love you. I know you by name. I'm never, ever, ever, ever going to let you go. Amen. Daybreak comes. Till daybreak comes around. All my life's a circle. All my life's a circle. Still I wonder why. Still I wonder why. Seasons spinning. Seasons spinning round again. The years keep rolling by. I've met you a thousand times. You've done the same. Then we lose each other. It's like a children's game. Now I find you here again. Thought comes to my mind. Our love is like a circle. Let's go round one more. Let's do it one more time. All my life. All my life's a circle. Sunrise and sundown. Sunrise and sundown. Moon rolls through the nighttime. Moon rolls through the nighttime. Till daybreak comes around. Till daybreak comes around. All my life's a circle. All my life's a circle. Still I wonder why. Still I wonder why. Seasons spinning round. Years keep rolling by, years keep rolling by, seasons spinning round, seasons spinning round again, the years keep rolling by.
That was great. Thank you. All my life's a circle. Life is a kind of circle, isn't it? It goes round and round. And as pastor and congregation, our lives have circled together. Um, it's been a long number of years. It's been, what, 14? I was just a youngster when I came here at first. Look at my gray hair. Look what you've done to me. <laughs> Our lives are circles, and they go round and round, and the seasons of life change, and life changes. And sometimes we wonder where the change is going to take us. There's this great story um, about Albert Einstein, who was known to be a genius, but he was also known to be slightly absent-minded. And Albert Einstein was on a, a train journey one day, and forgive me if you've heard this before, but he was on a train journey, and it's one of these times when the ticket collector comes through the carriages, and the ticket collector came up to Albert Einstein and said, do you have your ticket? And Albert Einstein checked all his pockets and his coat and his pants, and he couldn't find his ticket anywhere, and the ticket collector said to him, you know, Dr. Einstein, please don't worry about it. We know who you are. It's fine. And Albert Einstein, as the ticket collector, walked away. He kept on searching through his pockets, and then he went into his briefcase. He got down on his hands and knees, and he's scrabbling around on the floor looking for his train ticket. And the collector turned back to Albert Einstein and said, Dr. Einstein, it's absolutely okay. Your credit's good. We know who you are. We trust you. You've got a good name, a good reputation. You don't need to find your ticket. And Einstein said, I too know who I am, but I need to find my ticket because I've forgotten where I'm going. <laughs> where are we going? Do you know, sometimes um, as I look at the world, I wonder where are we going? Where on earth is the world going? It's a mess. Where are we going? in this country. Where are we going when we're separating parents from their children? Really, where are we going? Have we kind of lost sight of who we are? Where are we going when we're not caring for the vulnerable? Who are we? Albert Einstein knew who he was. Do we know who we are? Do we know what we stand for? Do we know what Scripture really says? Where are we going? And of course, individually, this morning you might be asking, where are we going as a family of faith? Where are we going? I don't know what the future holds. I sure wish I did, but I don't. But here's what I do know. We're going in the presence of God. The God who repeatedly says, I know you. I have called you by name. You are mine. Where are we going? Pastor Steve knows where he's going. Usually. <laughs> he's going to retirement. This man deserves to retire after his faithful service to you. He should be allowed this time to spend with his lovely wife, Sharon, and to concentrate on his passion for counseling. And he's a darn good one at that. And he's also the best colleague I've ever had. <laughs> I've only had one, but don't tell him. <laughs> <laughs> Where am I going? I'm going to Virginia. But the question that you might have this morning is why? And kind of, that's my question too. Why? I really don't like that I had to write you a letter. When I left the last two churches that I left, I did this, I stood before them. I stood before them so that they could hear it, what I would call straight from the horse's mouth. 
I'm going because I'm trusting that this is where God is leading me. But here's the thing, I don't know. I'm not going to cloak it in some flowery God language because unlike certain people, I don't know the mind and the will of God. I really don't. But I'm just trying to be faithful. Here's what I do know. Here's what I do know and here's what I've carried in my heart for a long number of months. I don't think I'm what you need at this point in time. I have heard all the voices telling me about falling numbers and about no kids. And I have carried that burden in my heart for a long time and thought, I do not have the gifts or the resources or the ability to turn that around for you. But if I did, I would have done it. But I can't. I just can't. And as far as I know my heart, I know this, that I think I leave you in a stronger position than I found you. I certainly hope I do. And I really want you to have a new lease of life with someone who's way more gifted than I am in leading you forward. I made this decision with a sad and a heavy heart because really, if I'm honest, I thought it might be a little longer, but I want to leave you strong so that you can move forward strong, stronger, and that you can move forward as I move forward trusting in God. Centuries ago, Isaiah the prophet wrote these words in Isaiah 43. My sermon title this morning is A Personal Promise, and you know, when I read this passage over and over again, I realized how personal it was. Because in this passage, probably more than any others, the word I is used, and God is using it, I, I. It's God's personal promise to each and every one of us as we look to a future that we do not know what it will bring. I don't know if I've made the right decision. I really don't. But almost five years ago, I stepped out in faith to come here. If it's any consolation to you, my decision to leave here was even more difficult than my decision to leave the land of my birth. And I really shouldn't have said that just before trying to read from Scripture. <laughs> but now thus says the Lord, He who created you, O Jacob, God who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, and you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt as your ransom, Ethiopia and Seba in exchange for you, because you are precious in my sight and honored, and I love you. I give people in return for you and nations in exchange for your life. Do not fear, for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east and from the west, and I will gather you. I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not withhold. Bring my sons from far away and my daughters from the very ends of the earth, everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. Amen, and thanks be to God. I can identify with Lucy. 
Lucy has had a bad week. I've had a bad week. Hands up if you've had a bad week. I hear you. It's been a bad week. Weeks like that come. And Lucy is complaining to her brother Linus. She says, life is really unfair. I had a terrible day at school. Everyone's picking on me. Everyone's ganging up against me. The teacher doesn't like me. Life is terrible. And Linus the philosopher says, Lucy, you have to understand that life isn't fair. Life is full of ups and downs. Lucy stamps her feet and says, I don't want ups and downs. I want ups and ups and ups and ups. Me too. But sometimes we're on a downer. And we can see no way to go. No other resource to dig deep to find, to keep going. Scott Peck, in his book, The Road Less Traveled, begins by saying this, life is hard. Ain't that the truth? Life is hard. There are ups and there are downs. And then in the very midst of all of it, there is God. There is God with a personal promise. Do not fear. I have called you by name. You are mine. Then God goes on to say, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they will not overwhelm you and the fire will not burn you. What God is saying is, in this very passage, he's saying, I know that there are the downs. There will be times when it feels like the waters will indeed completely overwhelm you and that you'll feel that you're drowning. God doesn't gloss over the fact that life is hard. My goodness, I saw what hard means. I saw what pain means when we gathered in this sanctuary yesterday. That's hard when you lose your child at the age of 23. That is hard. Life is hard, and God knows it. God understands it. God identifies it. There will be times when you feel that you're in the fires of hell, but they will not burn you or consume you. There are times when you feel that the waters will overwhelm you and you will drown, but you won't because I will be there with you, not standing at the edge of the river, but right there beside you. Life is hard. But what I have to give you this morning is this, that in life there is God. There is, without a doubt, God. And God is with all of us as we step out into that unknown. And as we wait for the waters to perhaps rise and rise and rise, and as we go through the difficulties and the struggles and the pains of life, there is God. There is God. A God who speaks into our lives and says, I know you by name and I love you. That's what I want you to hold on to today. God knows all of us by name, intimately. Jesus says the very hairs on your head are counted. God is right there, loving you. You know, I heard this story many years ago about a little girl called um, Mary Ann Bird, I think her name was. And Mary Ann, and later in life, um, spoke about something that happened to her when she was still at school. It was a time when at school, um, children would be giving a hearing test. They would have to put their hand over one ear, and a teacher would whisper something to them, and they'd to repeat it back. Did you ever do that? Yeah? What did the teacher normally say? The sky is blue. The grass is green. Something like that. Well, Mary Ann Bird was a little girl 
who suffered a lot of bullying at school. Nothing new there, huh? And she had a cleft palate. And her face was slightly disfigured. And you know what kids are like? Kids were mocking her and teasing her. She felt that nobody loved her, nobody cared about her. And one day when she was having her hearing test, she went into the room with the teacher. She put her hand over her ear. And she was waiting for the teacher to say, the sky is blue, the grass is green. But this is what she heard the teacher say. She heard the teacher whisper to this little girl who had a broken heart, I wish you were my little girl. I wish you were my little girl. And Mary Ann Bird looked back on that in later life and she said, you have no idea how transforming that was to know that someone loved me and wished that I could be their little girl. Cover your ears. God doesn't wish that you're his little children. You are. Amen. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. It's not scripted, but do wish each other peace anyway. your own good time. <laughs> Our song of response is hymn number 276, Great is Thy Faithfulness.
the ushers now uplift the offering. Please be seated.
to our prayer concerns this morning. Um, I want to add uh, Sheila Lawrence, or Shelley Lawrence, Sheila's daughter. She's in the uh, bulletin, but um, she's also in Wheaton Franciscan here in town. Bev Eifert's daughter, Autumn, our granddaughter, Autumn, who is, have, will have a prolonged hospitalization at Fredert in Milwaukee. Let us unite our hearts in prayer. Holy and loving God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come. We come this morning to offer our praise and thanks for your faithfulness to us throughout our lives. That you are our daily companion, going before us, behind us, beside us, and dwelling within us strengthening and sustaining us for the work you call us to do and the dreams you would have us dream and make real. We offer our thanks and praise for all who have ministered unto your people in this place throughout the generations, teaching our children, offering gifts of music and eloquence, planning and guiding mission trips, providing stewardship of monies, churning out weekly bulletins and newsletters, fixing and finding new and creative ways for duct tape, caring for one another. We give thanks and praise, O oh God, for the officers in this church now and for all those who have served before running the good race with faith and grace and hope. On this day, O oh God, we pray for fathers, our own fathers who helped give us life, for fathers who, like you, have buried a child and carry in their hearts a deep throbbing pain that will not be banished. For fathers who as children were little fathered or abused or abandoned and who now struggle in their role as father, who struggle to break free from the chains of the past, the nightmares of the past and step onto a new and unfamiliar path of love and commitment. We pray for fathers in failing physical and mental health, for those who have become like children that their children must now parent, for teen fathers, kids with a kid, bewildered and scared, and who risk perpetuating cycles of poverty and hopelessness. And we pray for men who cannot be fathers and carry within an aching emptiness. We pray for all men who have adopted children or have become big brothers, much like fathers who have taken kids under their wings and provided a love and devotion mirroring the divine love. We pray, O oh God, that you would draw near to them all. 
Bless them, guide them with wisdom and grace, strength and comfort and hope. We recognize, holy God, how change and the prospect of change elicits in us feelings of fear and uncertainty. In such times, hold us close. Breathe your peace and hope into our lives. Strengthen our faith and our trust that you will guide and that you are always about doing a new thing and that you will equip us for the work you would have us do. May our hearts and minds and souls be the good fertile soil that gives bountiful growth to the dreams and hopes you wish to plant in us in this place. We pray these things in the name of the one who taught all his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. God is the one who gently and tenderly bears with us, the God who calls us by name and who says, I am with you, I love you, do not fear. Let these words ring true in your hearts and in your lives, and go now into the world to love and to serve the God who whispers into your lives, you are my beloved children. And as you go, may the blessings of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you and rest and remain with you, with those whom you love, and with all God's people everywhere, today, tomorrow, and forevermore. 
And God's people gathered here together said, Amen. That was pathetic. Amen. And God's people said, Of, your, of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And also with you. Thank you.